Namaste. Hello, everyone. Hope you're all doing well and staying healthy. Dr. Srinidhi Chidambaram here. And welcome to a very special session presented by Apollo Hospitals today. The COVID-19 pandemic has thrown up more twists and turns than even a thriller. We spoke initially of Wuhan and lockdowns and hydroxychloroquine. And then we spoke of remdesivir, antibody cocktails, and Delta and the second wave, and then came the magic of the vaccines. In a COVID-19 weary world in which anger and frustration with the pandemic are high, with immense negative impacts on social, mental, and economic well-being, on November 25th, 2021, about 23 months since the first reported case of COVID-19, a new variant emerged and it was called a variant of concern, and that is the Omicron. This is the fifth variant of concern, and it has emerged at a time when vaccine immunity is also increasing in the world. When the Delta was ruling roost, there were other issues. There were issues of it being more infective, higher rates of reinfection, hospitalization, higher viral load, and there wasn't so much of the vaccine uh, availability. But now Omicron has emerged at a time when vaccination rates are also quite high and many nations have even started giving boosters, including ours have been announced. But concerns are there about lower vaccine efficacy. There are concerns about increased transmissibility. And definitely these new variants have highlighted the possibility that while we have vaccination and boosters, the public health prevention measures of masking and social distancing are also perhaps equally important. Omicron is indeed making everyone very concerned at a time when the world has opened up cautiously. So will staying at home, not being able to socialize, working from home, exam tensions, worries about the future, the oppression of online education, are they going to rule us again? What is the reality? How do we deal with this? To discuss this in detail, I have great pleasure in welcoming Dr. Nikhil Modi, Consultant, Department of Respiratory, Critical Care and Sleep Medicine at Indra Prastha Apollo Hospitals, New Delhi. He has been in this position from 2013. Dr. Modi has uh, had an MBBS degree from the Maulana Azad Medical College in New Delhi, and then an MD in Pulmonary Medicine from the Balabai Patel Chest Institute, University of Delhi. Uh, he has had extensive training and expertise in management of respiratory intensive care units uh, in sleep laboratory management, pulmonary function laboratory management, in fibro optic bronchoscopy and autofluorescence video bronchoscopy, allergy skin testing, immunotherapy for aeroallergens, tobacco cessation, and cardiopulmonary rehabilitation. He has immense research experience and has published extensively and also participated in many conferences and workshops throughout the world. He's a member of the Delhi Medical Council, fellow of the American College of Chest Physicians, member of the National College of Chest Physicians, member of the European Respiratory Society, among others, and has also received several awards, including the Young Investigator Award in the 14th Congress of the Asian Pacific Society of Respirology. Welcome, Doctor. Thank you so much for joining us in this very, very important session. And I know that viewers are looking forward to authentic information from us uh, on the Omicron variant. So let us begin by uh, over to you. And please let us uh, have a broad overview about what this is all about. Thank you, Dr. Srinidhi. Thank you for the kind introduction. Uh, uh, hello, all. I welcome you all in this session about Omicron, the new variant of concern which everybody is talking right now. As in India also, we are seeing number of cases which are coming up. As we talk right now, I think we have touched a figure of 500 of Omicron cases all over India. Uh, so what it is and what should be done? See, firstly, we need to understand that this COVID-19 virus which has come up is a type of a coronavirus. So it is not a new thing to have coronavirus causing uh, respiratory infections. It has been here for hundreds of years with us. And this coronavirus always keeps on mutating itself. 
that due to this mutation, these new pandemics and epidemics have been coming in the past also. So basically, it is a type of a RNA virus, which is which is the genetic material for it. So once it goes inside the cells of the body, it binds to the DNA of our cells. So when once it starts replicating, this DNA keeps on changing with time. And this change in DNA causes change in its antigens due to which newer new mutations keep on coming. So it is nothing new for a coronavirus to mutate itself. And due to this, we see newer strains which keep on emerging. But mostly what we have a past experience that as it mutates more and more, chances of it get the virulence getting uh, less are more. However, in few last cases like a Delta variant which came up, it was a more severe form, it was spreading faster and many people required hospitalization. Thankfully, the data for Omicron suggests that it is still a mild thing. If you see where it originated, country like South Africa where it originated, they have started to even uh, loosen the lockdown yes. and no deaths have been reported with Omicron. So it's a milder form till now. Even in the European countries, we take an example of uh, United Kingdom, the cases increase to 70,000 to 80,000, but still the mortality and the death rate as well as hospitalization has been less. So we are hoping though it can spread six to eight times faster as compared to the Delta variant, but it is going to stay mild and vaccines are going to protect us, even though it may still cause infection in a vaccinated person, but vaccine can decrease the severity of symptoms which we have. So those who have still not got vaccination done, I would advise them, please go for the vaccination. Even if you catch this, the chances of getting a mild infection are much, much more if you are vaccinated rather than if you are a non-vaccinated individual. So Omicron, as number of cases are bound to rise is a variant of concern but we are positive that a good vaccination status and our past experience of handling it with proper sanitization mask up and social distancing we will be able to get through it easily sure um, we have been hearing that you know there is is a special way to detect the Omicron through genomic sequencing. So yeah. are all samples tested for Omicron nowadays or how, how does the process happen? So even if somebody is testing for COVID, uh, when will we know whether it is Omicron or not? See, uh, if you go by the normal laboratories in which you send the sample, they are just performing a RT-PCR or a rapid PCR, which is called a CV-NAT. So in both cases, we are just checking for two genes for the uh, presence of a COVID infection. So the initial report which will come will be a, just a COVID-19 positive or a negative. Because genomic sequencing for that, you need a specialized virology lab, which is not being conducted by normal lab. So in cases where there is a, a high suspicion for an Omicron, just like who someone who has traveled abroad who has come in contact with a person who has been detected to be Omicron. So genomic sequencing is being done in these cases because still you cannot do genomic sequencing in large number of cases. So it is a restricted thing. And also once the piece COVID has come positive, it may take further two to three days also for the genomic sequencing to be done and the report to come. So not all samples are being tested as of now, but whenever the suspicion is high, then definitely we are checking for genomic sequencing. So the initial report which you will get is that whether you are COVID positive or not. Okay. So are there any particular uh, symptoms that one must uh, look out for in Omicron or because we did read about a particular report in the UK which said that it might even be as mild as just a common cold and you know half the common colds might be actually omicron covid so what do you have to say about that doctor do you think that yeah. uh, so does that mean that people have to be uh, really careful especially if there are elders at home so even if you have a cold or just a body pain and no typical symptoms do we have to be uh, alert yeah 
definitely even data from uh, african countries as well as uk as you have rightly said they all suggest that most of the cases are mild flu like symptoms so people are just having just mild body aches even no fever along with just irritation in throat a runny nose not more than that so even if you are having mild viral like symptoms it still can be omicron and if you have people around you who are elderly who are a high risk group of getting a severe infection then it's best to isolate yourself because it is just like a, a common cold so it can spread very fast to others and we have already seen that it is spreading much much faster as compared to other flus so it's better to be safe than sorry as we say so better take a precaution and isolate yourself get a covid test done covid reports are available within 24 hours then you can at least be on a safer side absolutely so omicron has been declared as a variant of concern by the who so could you tell us a little more about what is a variant of concern why do all these uh, mutants get classified like that or are there variants which are not of concern uh, as i've already told that the mutation is a dynamic process so even if you see for delta the delta variant which was there some of their mutations were there and four to five variants of delta were uh, at one point of time present even in our country as well but these mutations are of two types one is called as antigenic shift one is called as antigenic drift a shift mutation is a mutation which is of large number as is case is of omicron so if you see the spike protein the protein which helps the virus to attach to a cell it is showing almost 30 mutation in case of omicron so the number of mutations are very high so with number of mutations being high the way the virus behaves can change suddenly so number of cases were rampantly rising so in that case we don't know much about it only time is going to tell that's why these cases where the antigenic mutations are very high are labeled as variant of concern if it would have been one or two mutations it may not have been given a new name itself so it may be have been called as delta plus or something like that or just a variation of delta so these smaller mutation doesn't harm that much but suddenly if there is a large mutation which has occurred so new variant can be lethal also it may decrease the virulence it may increase the virulence now with time we are realizing it is low in virulence but still as the number of cases are rising and still there is a lot of population all over the world which can get infection as either they are not vaccinated or they never had covid in past so that's why it has been labeled as variant of concern because uh, medically the cost which is incurred to manage these cases goes up so uh, health resources are compromised uh, i think we are getting a lot of questions doctor so i think i will right away move on to the questions and then we'll come back to any other points that have not been covered sure. so the first this is coming from our live audience so the first one is what's the best defense against omicron i think we need to visit revisit our first and second wave right now the measures which we were taking of mask up hand sanitization and social distancing as we saw number of cases have reduced people have become lax about it they are not following that so just like any other virus just like the previous two waves the best protection for us is mask up vac- uh, along with social distancing and sanitization and the additional thing which we now have to fight against it is vaccination so those who have not va- got vaccinated as of now please get yourself vaccinated so that even if you get hold of this virus it will be a mild thing and uh, just continue to eat a good healthy diet so that your immunity is strong and the symptoms are rem- remains mild so please revisit what you were doing in the first and second wave and that that's all you need to do uh, what kind of a wave will india see uh, we do expect number of cases going up that is for sure uh, only thing is that till now even if we see the data of 
first 500 cases which we have seen all of them are mild mostly can be managed at home but since we want it not to grow too much that's why they are being kept in isolation facilities in some areas uh, but thankfully number of cases will rise but we don't expect hospitalization to go up significantly as well as severe cases will be less uh, will a third wave overwhelm India? Uh, as we are expecting a milder wave, it should not. And definitely vaccines are going to go a long way in protecting us about that. As we are in a much better position than we were yes. at the beginning. And we also know a lot about the yes. treatments, the protocols are more... Definitely, uh, the protocols are more, much more standardized. We yes. know which drugs at what time to be given. And we have learned a lot from first and second wave. So we are better prepared this time. Yes. Uh, will hybrid immunity work against Omicron? Uh, uh, hybrid immunity in terms of you getting an infection plus a vaccine. Uh, if you are talking about that, then Not definitely. Sure. But, yeah. It's a <laughs> hybrid thing is a uh, tricky word which has been used but what I feel hybrid immunity is that you have been vaccinated as well as have got a COVID in past obviously your immunity has been boosted up due to that so that is going to protect you definitely against Omicron still I would say we have had cases we have learned about cases who had a COVID one year back have been vaccinated and now getting a fresh COVID so still you can get a COVID but what we have seen, all of them have been mild, having symptoms for maximum three to four days, and all of have, them have, have been managed at home. When will COVID end? Uh, nobody can predict about the pandemic, but uh, as we see, you have been seeing each year or six months, you have a newer strain. So normally a pandemic which occurs lasts for a period of three to five years. Uh, in three to five years, due to repeated mutation, most of the time, either you have got an exposure to that, so you have developed an immunity, so the virus will not trouble you. Or if it comes, it will be just like a common cold. Further, the virus virulence also goes down uh, in time with all these mutations happening. So with these mutations, the virus becomes weak, so normally in three to five years, we expect our pandemic to end. So we are hopeful of the early uh, end of this pandemic in 2022, as it will be the third year of the wave. Uh, are the vaccines effective against Omicron? Yes, vaccines are effective against Omicron. Uh, uh, recently, I uh, saw a WHO report in which they have already said Sputnik and uh, even co-vaccine are doing good against Omicron strain. And uh, so whatever vaccine you have taken is going to protect you against Omicron. Yeah, the next question of course is about boosters. So are boosters critical to fight Omicron? Uh, see, boosters are basically there because over six months time, when you have taken your last shot, your uh, immune uh, antibodies level, the immunity which you have developed goes down. Some amount of memory is stored in your immune system, which can last throughout your life. But the booster can increase the number, uh, number of antibodies at that point of time, so that uh, the memory cells do not take time for your antibodies to form. And if you have got hold of the infection, so boosters may help you, uh, but uh, normally there is a other side of it also. Just like for a flu vaccine, which we see every year we get a flu vaccine in cases in which you have a low immunity. It helps you because every year a newer strain of flu, which has been identified is added to the vaccine. So the vaccine become more efficacious against the newer strain. So in future, what we see, as we identify newer and newer strains, the vaccines will have these strains incorporated in uh, themselves. So the vaccine will get better with time. For now, definitely booster may help in protecting us against COVID.
but uh, if you are immunity is strong you may not need a booster immediately the persons who immunity levels are low who are diabetic who are on cancer treatment especially who are elderly so their immunity and the memory which is formed is short lasting most of the time so that's why a booster for them is much much more useful rather than a normal population what about uh, children so do school going kids do they have to be vaccinated and also do infants uh, need to be vaccinated but we haven't got vaccines for infants yet but... yeah unfortunately we don't have vaccination and kids are uh, you uh, needing the vaccine definitely because the that is actually if you see 0 to 18 years population is the most vulnerable group which is left right now to any form of covid because they have never been vaccinated only those who have got infection have uh, acquired a natural immunity and natural defense against them but the population in that children age group is definitely at risk and we have seen some examples especially like in singapore as soon as they opened the school because children cannot follow all these uh, judiciously the mask up and all these things and once they mingle the number of cases were seen to rise so vaccine needs to come but at same time we have to see vaccine should be safe for children so we are on the way of getting a safer vaccine for uh, 15 to 18 years age group it has already been announced and uh, we do expect in next three to six months time we will be having vaccine for a younger population as well is it safe to travel in the current scenario with an infant uh, obviously if you are traveling to an area uh, where the cases are on the rise it is not advisable so again as we used to say when the first and second wave used to come avoid unnecessary travel so if you don't need to travel if there is no emergency avoid for now wait how it behaves uh, what we are seeing in the uh, uh, case of omicron the wave is setting settling faster even in africa it is on the downward trend already within two months time detected the first case in end of november and in one month time we are saying that the wave is started to settle down the peak is over so i think we can wait for a month or two for our safety and then travel uh, whenever necessary if Omicron is milder, what do the deaths in UK or US indicate? See, the milder thing doesn't mean that people cannot have a severe infection. So that's why we always say do get vaccinated and do take all the precautions. Because if you take all the precautions, the exposure uh, to the viral load, the number of viruses which go in your body will be less. So you will have a milder symptom. But if you think that you are the boss and you don't take precautionary measures, then obviously there is still a risk, especially in a population who is uh, immunocompromised. So we don't have exact data, the deaths which have occurred in home, but what we have idea is that there must be some uh, immune, immunocompromised individual who must have got a severe form of death. So that's why it is labeled as very rate of concern. So even though the mortality and the severity may be less, but there will be still few cases who can have a severe disease. So that's why we still need to take all the precautions. Is there any data on whether uh, Omicron particularly uh, affects the lungs or any particular organs? Because last time we spoke so much about, uh, you know, the, the chest infections yeah. and how they In, affect the lungs, clots. Yeah. In Delta variant case, the lung involvement was much, much higher as compared to a normal uh, COVID or flu infection. Uh, for the initial data which we are have, the lung involvement is less in Omicron cases. Um, will the existing uh, treatments work against Omicron? Yes, so, it will. They will work. Most so of the time, it is the body's immunity which works. We usually give supportive treatment. Now, if we see latest reports and all, even remdesivir, tocilizumab, everything is out. So, what 
treatment is there is just a supportive treatment which we give in flu like a uh, paracetamol tablet for fever, anti-allergic to relieve your runny nose, sore throat and inhalers or nebulizer to relieve the bronchitis or congestion which sets in and in some cases steroids if the oxygen is going down and the blood thinners to prevent the clotting com complications. So these are the mainstay which have been left and they work in all forms of viral infection and in fact not only COVID. There's also this new uh, medication that has been launched in the US, isn't it, about uh, to protect against COVID. So yeah. will they find a place in our treatment protocol as well? Yeah, uh, they, it has been launched and maybe it will soon be introduced in India as well. And uh, But again, all the things like Remdesivir, which was launched initially, it was thought to be a miraculous drug and then the reports from WHO which has come that it is not as efficacious as it was thought. So again with this new medicine we will have to take it with a pinch of salt. Whether it will work wonders or not, we still are not clear. Only time is going to tell us. Is Omicron more transmissible? Yes, it is more transmissible and data suggests it is six to eight times more transmissible as compared to the last Delta variant. Um, yeah, we already discussed this, but again, the question is, when is the vaccination for children under the age of 10 coming to India? It should Maybe come in the next three to six months time because two vaccines are under process, yes. which are being tried for children and hopefully we'll get them soon available for our children. Is uh, COVID-19 variant Omicron worse than the Delta variant? We have already discussed this, but so far, so good. So far, so good, and we are expecting it will remain good. Yes. Um, as Omicron spreads, is the meaning of fully vaccinated going to change? Yes. Uh, even uh, fully vaccinated people are having Omicron uh, infections. Even few cases which we have seen fully vaccinated people can have other strains also. So. Uh, fully vaccinated as we already are saying that the vaccine efficacy is 70 to 80 percent only in various vaccines. So even if you are fully vaccinated, there will be out of 120 cases who have not developed any form of antibodies or immunity. So they are still a vulnerable population. But uh, the concept of giving vaccination even in children which we are running the program is to vaccinate 70 to 80 percent of the population which creates a herd immunity that's a barrier so that the non-vaccinated people are also protected in that case so definition for fully vaccinated may not change but now since the booster are going to be introduced so a new uh, certificate may be issued that you have got a booster also and then we see how it goes right is there anything else that you would like to mention uh, doctor, before we wind up the session. So basically, definitely a new strain has come up. We have seen that it has come to India. We are bound to see a surge in number of COVID cases. So go back to your basics of hand sanitization, mask up and social distancing. If you are not vaccinated, please get yourself vaccinated. Now again, start avoiding unnecessary travels. And if there is a vulnerable group of people at your home, try to protect them as much as possible. We can get through this wave. We have learned a lot in last two waves and we feel we will be able to get uh, through this wave easily and much better as compared to the last two waves. We have two more questions. So one is about the senior citizens with comorbidities. So will they benefit from the booster dose announcement? Yeah they should benefit because as I said that uh, the long term immunity which is formed in uh, elderly people or who are immunocompromised due to any comorbidities. So the last long lasting immunity may not be formed in those cases. So a booster can help in boosting the immunity and protect them from any problems in future. Uh, the last question is, is there likely to be a new vaccine for Omicron? Yeah, as I give an example of flu vaccine, that yearly the vaccine has newer strains added to it. 
so that we get updated in terms of getting protection against the newer strain so maybe in future all these vaccines which are available so once they are forming the new uh, vaccines so they will incorporate uh, the spike proteins in cases of sputnik and covishield as well as uh, maybe a dead recombinant virus uh, in cases of co vaccine so we can get new vaccine with the co uh, against omicron as well right so thank you so much dr nikhil modi for this wonderful discussion and viewers this time though the omicron mutant is concerning as doctor said we have all the tools to fight it so much better than in the past and the good thing is that most of the tools are in your hands so you know it very well the vaccines the boosters have now been announced and if you're eligible then that is possible mask social distancing avoiding crowds hand hygiene so everything is really in our hands and i'm sure with also this view that omicron is going to be milder that is another potential silver lining so there should be no panic no anxiety let's face this wave with calmness and the miraculous power of medical advancements so thank you so much viewers for joining in and you can post more of your comments and queries in our facebook page and contact us on all our social media channels including our youtube channel so stay safe stay well thank you see you soon namaste